Good afternoon. Did you enjoy the drama? No, you thank God for that exciting drama. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to this uh, worship service. The title of today's message is Many, Many Take Care of Sin. Let's read a key verse, uh, verse 25. Let's go. This is the inscription that was written. Many, many take care of our sin. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much for uh, uh, blessing us through your words on uh, the book of Daniel. May you bless us that we may uh, put what we learned into practice. Our Father, may you bless us that in all things we do, we may acknowledge you as the sovereign Lord over our life, Lord. May you bless this worship service from the beginning to the end. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> First, but you have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Look at verse 1. <clears throat> King Belshazzar gave a, a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. Nebuchadnezzar ruled the Babylonian Empire from 605 to 562 BC. After him, his son Amel Maduk became king, but was almost immediately assassinated and was replaced by his brother-in-law, Negri Kalisar. In 556 BC, Nabonidus became king, but after ruling three years in Babylon, he felt completely empty and mean meaningless. That uh, he went to the oasis of Tema, located in, in uh, northeastern Saudi Arabia, and there he devoted himself to his god, Sin. Surely luxury or power or uh, uh, wealth or pro uh, the pleasure could not be the meaning of human life. Humans are to worship the true God, but sadly, uh, Nabonidus did not know who the true God was, so he ended up devoting, devoting himself to a worthless idol. When he left Babylon, he said his son Belshazzar, uh, the, the, as the uh, co-regent, uh, co and made him in charge of defending the city of Babylon. During this time, the Medes and Persians uh, uh, grew strong and they attacked the Babylonian Empire. In the year 540 BC, Nabonidus returned from the oasis to defend his kingdom from uh, the Medes and the Persians. But on October 10, 539 BC, Nabonidus surrendered and fled from Cyrus, the king of Persia. Then two days later, on October 12, 539 BC, the united army of the Medes and Persians captured the city of Babylon. So today's event happened at the night right before the fall of the city of Babylon, October 11, 539 BC. Now the united army of the uh, Medes and Persians was uh, surrounding the city of Babylon, but the city of Babylon was indestructible because it has a really huge and thick uh, wall surrounding the whole city. Inside the city, there was enough food and water for years. Just they closed the gates of the city and were waiting, and the army of the uh, the Medes and Persians could not do anything. Then, you know, to boost up the spirit and morale of the officers and nobles, Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank with them. It was an animal party. If godly people faced that kind of challenge, they would gathered together and encouraged each other to have faith in God and pray. But see how these ungodly uh, men 
you know, try to boost up the spirit of his people through a wild animal party. What a silly idea it was compared to how godly people respond the way Belshazzar or other worldly people, unbelieving people, try to cope with their burdens or fears is indeed barbaric. True civilization comes from trusting in God. And true nobility comes from believing in Jesus Christ. Then as the king was drunk, he did something he should not have done. He ordered to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. So they drank from them. As they drank the, drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. It was an open mockery, despising and making sport of God's name. It was something that should not have been done. But the king lost his mind due to drinking too much wine. He, he ended up crossing the line, committing the sin of blasphemy. The Bible warns about drinking, uh, uh, about drinking. Even a righteous man, Noah, made a big mistake due to drinking too much wine and ended up causing his son Ham to sin, bringing curse on his descendants. Even the righteous man, Noah, can make such a big mistake when drunk. Then what about us, just the ordinary believers like you and me? So how thankful we must not drink for ourselves, for our family, and mostly for the glory of God. How thankful we are that God has freed us from the danger of alcohol. Still, my friends drink a, lot, drink a lot, but I don't drink anymore, so I don't need to worry about the DUI. When he believed in Jesus, when he accepted God's grace personally, when he repented of our sins sincerely, blessing the beginning of our new life in Jesus, God simply took away the desire for drinking from our hearts. God suddenly just broke the yoke of alcohol and set us free. Wow, that was amazing grace that was poured out upon us. Look at verses 5 and 6. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as he wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave away. It seemed that Belshazzar was really bold when he dared to use the gold and silver goblets that belonged to God and God's temple. Even the great king Nebuchadnezzar had not done such evil, but Belshazzar was not bold. Actually, he was so silly thoughtless and childish. When something that went beyond his understanding happened, he was so frightened. His face, his face turned pale. His knees knocked together and his legs gave, gave away. So, so there are so many people who look so bold in sinning, but there is no one who is bold in sinning. Inside, they have great fear. The king called out for the enchanters, astrologers, and diviners to be brought and said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck, and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But none of them could read it nor uh, interpret it. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified 
and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. The queen then came in and comforted him, saying, O king, live forever. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. She encouraged him to call for Daniel, saying, He will tell you what the writing means. As of that time, Daniel was very old. If he was 20 years old when he was brought to Babylon as a captive, that was, in, uh, that was uh, 605 BC, then in 539 BC, he would be already 86 years old. It seemed that he had already retired. Maybe that's why he was not at the king's banquet. So Daniel was brought before the king. The king asked him to interpret the writings on the wall, promising him that if he did, he would give him a lot of gifts and make him the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But Daniel turned down his offer saying, you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. But before giving him the interpretation of the writing, Daniel gave him a history re lesson. What had happened to Nebuchadnezzar? When he was very proud, God stripped him off all his power, wealth, and glory, and even his human sanity, and made him the lowliest of all, making him, uh, 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 letting him eat a grass like a cattle. Then when he acknowledged uh, God as the sovereign Lord over his life and over his kingdom, God restored him to his original glory. God was real, and people should live before him with a fearful and trembling heart, acknowledging God in their life. Then Daniel rebuked Belshazzar, saying, But you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. Daniel said to him, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. How did he do that? He said, You had a goblet from his temple brought to you, and you and your nobles, your wives and your concubines, drank wine from them. Belshazzar set himself up against the Lord by treating things of God things that belonged to God with a contempt. It was never Belshazzar's idea, desire, or hope that he would set himself against the Lord. But just he was proud, and he wanted to boost up the spirit of his soldiers, his officers. But by treating things of God with a contempt, he ended up setting himself against God. Many people do the same thing. Indeed, it is never anyone's desire to set himself or herself against the God. But they do so by treating things of God, such as God's word, such as God's laws, such as God's kingdom, God's name, God's church, God's people with contempt. Daniel also rebuked him, saying, You praise the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his life your life, in his hand your life and all your ways. His sin was that he had not honored God, even if he knew about how God had trained his father, Nebuchadnezzar. It was obvious that God was real and that he was the sovereign Lord. God was actively involved in the lives of people. 
So Belshazzar had to honor him because God held in his hand his life and all his ways, everything of his life, his success and suffering, his happiness and loneliness, all were in God's hands. He had to honor God by showing him respect, by living before him with a caution, sincerity, and humility. But Belshazzar did not honor God. Instead, he set himself against God by treating things of God very casually and contemptuously. God is the sovereign Lord over our life. God holds in his hand our life and all our ways. What kind of job you will have? What kind of life you will live? What kind of family you will have? He holds all these things in his hand. So we must honor him. How much uh, uh, respect do you show to your professors who has just slight authority over your grades? Or maybe a slight authority over what kind of graduate school you can uh, go to? Because that authority, you are very careful in your words and actions toward uh, your professors. Then how much more to God who holds in his hand our entire life and all our ways. So we must honor God. Then how can we honor God? People say, when I say, you, you must honor God. And they say, I honor God. How can you really honor God? You can honor your professor by being careful in your words and actions. But God is invisible. He's in heaven. How can we honor God? Belshazzar failed to honor God because he valued those idols of gold, silver, iron, wood, and stone. He, pursued, he valued them, so he pursued them, and he praised them instead of praising God who held his life in his hand. Like Belshazzar today, many people fail to honor God. How? By valuing and praising such idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. They brag about what a wonderful car they drive. You don't brag about that. You are so poor. So. That's good. That's good. People brag about what a wonderful house they, they have. What a great the degree they have. What license they have. What a great career job they have. They all brag about these things. That's what they value. That's what they pursue. That's what they praise. That's how people fail to honor God. This is the trend in the society. Such people are idol worshippers. God does not like them because instead of honoring him who in his hand holds their life and all their ways, these people praise those worthless idols. Let's not give our hearts to those idols. The whole world is about this idol worship, valuing and praising the idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and even wood. Let's not worship idols, but God alone. As a conclusion, Daniel said, Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. Honoring God sounds conceptual and theoretical, but actually it is very practical for those who acknowledge God's sovereignty over their lives. They show absolute attitude toward the things of God. They, instead of valuing and praising things of gold, silver, 
and stone and wood, they value and praise God. Those people worship God really. So today, what do you worship? Today, what do you honor? God or idols?